to start off with a look at uh, the economic picture because while we had inflation data at the start of the week out of China ease some investor concern about tighter policy moving forward, we've since seen a higher than expected numbers out of the UK. We've seen South Africa uh, seeing a ticking higher in its CPI as well. How are you reading the entire economic scenario right now? Yeah, I think it's plagued by a lot of um, uncertainty at the moment. Um, you know, increases in prices does not really bode well for um, subdued growth. Um, as you've mentioned, uh, there were, you know, UK had um, doubled its expectation of 2%. It had 4% inflation. And that um, obviously implies that uh, we may see interest rates hikes um, a little bit sooner than anticipated in that economy. And I think the, the governor there did mention that, um, you know, it may be a little bit steeper than, infl uh, than anticipated. And that in, in that economy, it's not necessarily a good thing and also you know China would they better than expected inflation figures perhaps we'll see some easing of the tightening of monetary policy of that you know trying to control the demand side of that economy and perhaps that will bode well for our um, you know for our um, commodity intensive um, industries that depend on the Chinese demand but um, I think overall when we see ours may, the main contributors there were really um, food and infl uh, food and non-alcoholic beverages as well as um, you know the increased petrol price there um, and, the, and, the, and the transport side of things and uh, I think you know it's something that's uh, the Reserve Bank will not necessarily um, react to right now. I think they're looking at other factors that are more pressing for um, that are more pressing for them to increase rates um, in the near future. But. Uh we expect that um, they will keep the rate steady for 2011. But it's certainly something to keep an eye out of. Um, of. And um, later on in the United States, the market is still holding um, its breath, waiting for the PPI numbers that are coming out there. So a big week for inflationary yeah. concerns. Well, out of the U.S., I mean, a possible precursor to those inflation numbers stateside yesterday, the gauge of manufacturing in New York climbing to its highest in eight months as import prices jumped. So we have more and more companies starting to worry about the price of input as a saying earlier so what exactly are you forecasting on that end well, you know, I think we are expecting that uh, we may see a tick up there in inflation. And um, the U.S. futures, um, as we, you know, as I was looking at earlier, ha are quite high. So perhaps um, we'll see a strong opening there in the United States, perhaps to be closer to what is expected. But um, it certainly is. I mean, they, they do have also their mortgage applications coming out today. So perhaps the futures are pointing more to the, towards those figures. But it certainly is something that the market is looking out for. Well, certainly keeping a close attention on BHP today. We saw numbers out of that company. Company, the market reacting negatively and that on the back of the fact that we've had the company announce eight billion dollars uh, worth of expansion uh, to be spent on expansion share buyback program amounting to a further 10 uh, 10 billion dollars there uh, what did you make of those numbers overall no, very stellar numbers, um, you know, very, very good result from there. But it's expected with the high prices in the commodities at the moment. So we do expect that. But um, I think, uh, you know, the outlook statement is what has brought um, the, the trading price down. I think a lot of players are also just trying to take the money off the table at the top also. They did mention that, you know, demand side is not necessarily going to be as it was last year going forward. China is, which is the, uh, obviously the biggest demander of commodities, is trying to curb um, the demand in their economy. So. That will definitely limit them. The supply side also is in problems because they are they do have mature operations. So you know they're dealing with that, and it's a delicate balance between the two. And we definitely may not see such huge jumps in earnings as we've seen um, of late from that company. But I think uh, you know going forward, um, it, it has been a, a you know a good a good showing from them. The 80 billion rand uh, sorry billion dollar expansion project has been very well received, especially the 10 billion dollar um, share buyback, which has been very well received. Um, in, in, um, in the, in, for shareholders and I think ma mainly they what to take away is that um, in the expansion they, they're not going to be looking more at um, acquisitions such as the one they were bidding for for potash um, which you know would prove very expensive in this um, high commodity cycle but you know what, what is very important there is that they are willing to give money back to shareholders they are very cash flush at the moment they're almost dead debt free and so it is a st still a very solid company that's got strong prospects going forward while we've got BHP shying away from those big acquisitions we had uh, a big announcement out of growth point and of the PIC this week uh, you know on the acquisition of the VNA waterfront bringing it back into South African uh, hands we've seen Moody's come to the fore today saying that on the back of that acquisition we could possibly see a downgrade for growth point uh, what are you making of that news 
Yeah, th and this morning the market certainly didn't like it, but I see that it did peak itself up into the green um, a little bit earlier, um, later on in the day. But I think the market, uh, you know, reacted quite correctly. Um, Moody's is quite correct in actually questioning the, the credit um, aspect of them or the credit implications for this um, the, um, that this um, project um, or this acquisition brings about for growth point. Um, it is 11% of their total assets and it's very, it, it encumbers the company quite a lot and, you know, they're still not sure or they still haven't come out to say how will the financial structuring of the acquisition happen. So, you know, there's a lot of liquidity issues that will come in there and, you know, at the, and Moody has obviously called it right and said, you know, they need to reevaluate that. But whether there will be a downgrade or not um, will all depend on what, um, you know, on further investigation. But I think that um, at the moment it's all a wait and see game to see whether um, how encumbered um, growth point will be going forward. So that a company will be keeping an eye on. In the meantime, broad market dynamic in Tombentle. I mean, we've got many saying the low volume means there's no conviction either way. Uh, which side of the fence are you guys sitting on? Are you just uh, dabbling in terms of sector rotation at this stage, as majority seem to yeah. be? Yeah, you know, I think we definitely agree. There's, there seems to be lots of rage-bound activities, whether you're talking about the RAND, the Euro, even the equities market, it's all really very range-bound. Even commodities also are range-bound. There's nothing really that has come out in the market um, of late that will actually give some impetus to it and make it ra uh, rise up quite sharply or down um, uh, quite sharply. But um, So we're just sitting there waiting in the sidelines, waiting in the wings to see which direction market would take.